Welcome back to A Case of the Jills. I I'm only laughing because <laughs> if you only knew, it's like, I know I need to shoot a video today, but like, I haven't washed my hair in longer than I even want to tell you. And I put makeup on basically a dirty face so that you could at least see someone that looked moderately presentable. And I'm sitting in my living room trying to arrange plants so that it looks kind of nice. This whole thing's crazy, <laughs> it's just so funny. Okay, but anyway, and two lips here, of course, on the floor. Today is the third in the Hormonal Health series. This is a really important installment of the Hormonal Health series because this is super, super conclusive. If you have any question about what the problem is, I am going to take those questions away today. Tell me if this sounds like you. You're an athlete, you heard about fat adapted diets, you've heard about low carb diets, there seems to be a lot of great benefits. The first thing is that you might get a decrease in body fat. Who doesn't want a decrease in body fat? So you're like, check, I am on board for that. Second thing is that you hear that on a fat adapted diet or that on a lower carbohydrate diet, that your energy throughout your endurance activity is going to be much more even, that you are going to be able to run forever on much less fuel, that you're not going to have spikes of energy and hitting the wall. So you say, I'm gonna give this a try. And you do. And what happens? The first thing that happens is that you lose a little bit of body fat. Yay! You may even lose some body weight. Yay! And everything seems to be going great. And you're like, wow, yeah, I feel like I have more energy while I'm out there running and maybe you don't need as many gels. That's debatable and there's science to go either way with that. But let's just say you're having a great experience with it. Well, then all of a sudden, why does this situation go bad? You may notice that as time is going on, you're getting more sluggish. And you might notice, hmm, what's this little something something over here on the side of my shorts that wasn't there before? There's some fat gain and you're trying to figure out what's going on. It's kind of like going and going and going. The benefits are not happening anymore. So what do you do? This is the critical problem. This is why we are our own worst enemies. You say, I need to run a little more. I need to cut calories a little bit more. I gotta clean up my diet, a, a detox. Maybe I have to try some fasted cardio. Maybe I should get up early in the morning and go out and run on an empty stomach and see how that works. I've heard that really burns fat. Listen, I've been there, I have done that. In my case, the reason why I was on such a low carbohydrate diet is because I was absolutely terrified to eat grains and starchy carbohydrates because of celiac disease and all the complications I had with that. I'm not making excuses for myself. I sort of started out with good intentions of taking care of my symptoms and not having the big problems that I had. So let's go through the science really quick. And I'm going to again show you this book. This is Roar by Dr. Stacy Sims. Go buy it. I promise you, you will not regret it. Okay, so here's the science. Training fasted, or when the brain senses a decrease in glycogen, increases cortisol. To manufacture more cortisol, your body steals from the female sex hormones to do this. It needs to support the stress of what you're putting the body under. So you have a decrease in sex hormones and a thyroid hormone, you have a big problem. Because now, when you have a decrease in all of those things and you have an increase in cortisol, you get fat storage. So let's take this a step further. When you have chronically elevated cortisol, you are stealing, again, from the, the production of those female hormones over time. So now you've got amenorrhea. You also have cortisol and its nasty, nasty brother aldosterone are pumping through your system. And you know what aldosterone does? Yes, it increases fat storage, it also creates a situation where you are filled with water. That's right, you are retaining water, you have increased fat, and you feel like crap. What is the remedy to this? I'm gonna make this quick. This is something that you can also find in the book by Dr. Stacy Sims. Carbs help your body burn fat. It's right here, the science is here. Low carbohydrate diets are going to encourage your body to hang on to fat. Also, with that increase in cortisol, you have no sex hormones. So guess what you need to do? You need to eat carbs. You need 130 grams of carbohydrate for minimal survival. This is just walking around, breathing, talking, that's it. Once you add endurance exercise on top of this, your carbohydrate needs go way up. 
Now here's the funny thing, the human body is super smart. So if you don't eat those minimal 130 grams of carbohydrates a day, your body will find energy. Oh yes, it will find energy. It's gonna find it somewhere, and you know what it's gonna do when it does? It's gonna store more fat, make you tired, and ruin your female sex hormones, AKA amenorrhea town. Now, because I love science, and I really wanna make sure that you don't think that I'm just speculating about this stuff. First study is effective dietary intervention in female athletes with menstrual disorders. Okay, so here's what they did. They had a whole bunch of female athletes who had hormonal disruption. For three months, they put them on a diet of increased carbohydrates. Guess what happened? They had no change in their body mass index or body composition. But you know what they did have an increase in? female sex hormones. The quickest way to fix your problem is address your nutrition. Go ahead and look at the science, see what it says. If you increase the amount of carbohydrates that you eat, you are going to decrease the amount of cortisol in your system. Cortisol is not going to be stealing those sex hormones. You are going to get a period. One caveat to this is for people who have diabetes, this probably will not apply to you. I absolutely do not know the ins and outs of carbohydrate intake on insulin and situations of diabetes, so please disregard this if that is your situation. Hello, Tulip. Mommy's filming, is that okay? So again, as I always say, I am absolutely not telling you what to do. I'm just giving you my take on the situation, backed by science, and also a little bit of my own personal experience. Tulip's on the floor in front of me, sorry, as usual. I really hope that this is helpful for you. I hope that this answers some questions. I know that when I was going through this, I just, I couldn't make the connections. I could not see how one thing led to another and I certainly was not willing to make the changes because I just didn't have enough evidence. But what I'm trying to do today is give you evidence so that it's very clear. If you have any questions, please, please, please comment below and I'm happy to answer them. I'm going to link to all the studies that I have talked about. I really encourage you again to please go buy the book Roar by State Sims. I'm going to link that below as well. Please like and subscribe to my channel. One question, I got a request to do a full day of eating. If this is something that you'd like to see, please like this video and also let me know in the comments section below. Hope you're all doing well and thanks for watching.